everybody. Welcome to Games for Gamers. I'm your host, Napalm Dawn, here on Marvel Avengers Alliance. So what I wanted to do for you guys today was to go ahead and show you some weapons that I think are kind of unsung weapons, old weapons, eclectic weapons, esoteric weapons. Basically, some weapons that maybe you've never heard of I never really thought of what you could do with them, like combo them, or who you can work them with, and everything like that. So, I just wanted to go ahead and show you some of those items, and see what you think about them. Now, I will say that, unfortunately, for this video, I will not be going full screen. And the reason why I'm not going full screen is so that I can go ahead and use the type ahead feature, or the type search feature, when looking for this gear because it definitely is scattered around the place but what i'm going to do real quick is go ahead and use spider girl in the bruiser daily i think that is pretty cool of play dom to have given us a bruiser daily here on a day after we get a bruiser as a pvp reward this will give you guys a little bit of a chance to continue to see um well, Sparta Gwen is training at the moment. Actually, yeah, you know what? I got a, on a flight deck. Let's not worry about it because one flight mission and she should be ready to go. So, let us break over here to the agent. And I will show you some of the interesting gear that I've acquired over time. And kind of discuss it. Maybe it will spark an interest in this gear for you. Similar to how way, way, way back when, when it was freshly out, I happened to catch Kingfisher's Thing and Black Bolt video called Thing is Invincible in PvP. And it featured the Emerald Prism. And that made me really want to get that item. It was from a PvP season that I didn't get it. So like back in the day you had huge things that you could get. From doing PvP, like the Cube, the Mystic, the Emerald Prism, and everything like that. Really, really nice rewards. One of the last nice rewards that I missed was the Beyond Corp Can Opener. I swear to God, I would get that in a heartbeat the moment it ever shows up. Mostly because I tried so hard for that weapon that season, fell short. I've kind of never looked back since then. So one of the first items I wanted to point out is this, the Splinter of Night. This can follow up on anybody who has the Dark Void. It also has a nice buff of having the damage from tech attacks, including like the weather control device, things like that. So this item, basically anybody that has Dark Void, anytime you hit them, this has a chance to follow up, and yes, this works on quick action. So if the entire enemy team has Dark Void, and you use, say, the weather control device's Fire Nato, the Splinter of Night can actually follow up and hit every single person over there. The Oni Breaker was uh, around from the Blade Spec Ops. This is a little bit of a weird item that if at the beginning of the second round... Because that's the earliest this could kick in, not the first. But at the beginning of the second round, if you are all the way up at 100% health, all damage received is reduced by a whopping 75%. If at 100 health at the beginning of a turn, receive Exalted where you are immune to attrition and dots. You hit all enemies for Melt Armor and it is Hallowed and it is Ethereal Strike. So this is a really tough weapon to use. But if you were to use this with some new items like all the drain items and everything like that. If you drain the hell out of people in round one, at the beginning of round two, sacred would kick in. If you were going very, very... It's so hard to pull off unless somehow you orchestrated it that you like healed yourself really big at the end of round one. And somehow got a turn very early in round two. Uh, the Isosaur Whisperer, this item was from a gold sale, and by that when I say gold sale in this video, I mean when they sell gold, 
and if you spend uh, 50 or 100 dollars, you get the item that they are throwing in for free. This was a complicated thing to use at the time it was released. When you used it, it didn't do a whole lot of damage. It didn't really put anything out. It exploited a bunch of stuff, but even when it was exploiting, it didn't seem to do that big of damage. However, if the agent got attacked, the Isosaurs may pop out with clever girls, and you basically got those Savage Land buffed up raptors attacking everybody. At that point, they would bleed everybody, ravaged everybody, and flanked everybody. How you can use this item now, this is really good with like Union Jack and Rocket Raccoon and Spider Noir because everybody that gets hit by the Isosaur Whisperer becomes a valid victim for people like that to follow up on. So Union Jack may follow up on all three of them, Spider Noir might do it. So that's where all of a sudden this weapon has some gadget, I guess you could say, has some new life to it. The Knight is an interesting melee weapon in the sense that not only does it counterattack and cause a protect when you use it, it does radiation exposure. You don't see that too often in a melee weapon. So one of the oldest items that I have that has never been available since the beginning of the game is the X-Play Exploiter. So, similar to the Yallerhorn who went on sale in Destiny a few weekends ago, the first time the Yallerhorn was on sale was way back when Destiny released, about a year ago. The X-Play Exploiter was only available around the time the producers of Marvel Avengers Alliance were on a show called X-Play talking about the game. At that time, the producers had a very famous quote saying they wanted to design a game as epic as Final Fantasy VII. Now, I don't think they've accomplished that. However, they certainly made a phenomenal game. I wouldn't be playing it if it wasn't. But if you signed up for the beta at that time, you were given this X-Play Exploiter, which is a massive four-round cooldown item that blinds everybody for one round and staggers everybody for three as a quick action. So that's something kind of interesting. This is really good when you needed to get around the Hoogan's Eye, but of course the Manvatar and then later the Scroll of Rudimaroth or any opportunistic debuffs would show up. So one of my favorites that I use is the Emerald Prism. This again was an old PvP reward item, as we stated. It really was very tough to use until the Snappy Service ISO came around. The only other way of using it would be to somehow effectively gain an extra turn as a tactician or use the tactician suits bonus. Or, like I said, use Snappy Service because Snappy Service turns a buff action into... A quick action since this is magic this would heal off of the crooked branch and honestly you know what i've done with this um brulio has, has done some videos i will link a video in the description that uh has a 20 minute match with an agent that was spamming the cosmic shield for pvp um, the Emerald Prism works really, really great when applied to a constant protector like a Groot, a Wonder Man, a Colossus, a Thing, or a constant attacker like a Eternally Flanked Gambit, or, of course, how I use it, Molly. My biggest disappointment in using this, believe it or not, was Karnak. I had thought potentially every one of the pre-counters that Karnak would do would count for a uh, stacking increase. However, it didn't work out that way. This is an old item called the Stone Golem Club. It has a two round cooldown. Um, it has, when you hit one enemy, it has a chance to kind of do a splash damage, a fragmentation of the stone in the club and hit all enemies similar to the uh, Blaster ISO. Here is this interesting item called the Gilded Semi-Autogun. This was very popular around the time 
that uh, Hawkeye's little partner in crime came about, Kate, because it was a very easy way to put out pinpoint target on people, and it was a whopping four-round debuff. From the Falcon Spec Ops, we have the Breaching Kit Pistol. Why I'm pointing this thing out is this thing can actually explode Fixer's Mines. So, if you wanted to somehow use Fixer in massively quick assault, like put out a mine, exploit it, put out a mine, exploit it, you can use the Breaching Kit Pistol to do it. This was quite popular with certain group bosses where Fixer would just sit there and spam all the mines he could and then you would blow them up with the breaching kit. The Vibra Crescent. This was one of my favorite all-time melee weapons. It gains a buff if used with the Combat Serum which gives it this melee acceleration. With the melee acceleration you have a 50% chance to dodge an incoming attack. And your chance to preemptively counter goes up. Dangerous in the realm of Heroic Age Iron Fist, however, this has a permanent Viber Crescent pre-counter. Anybody hit with this, whether it's the pre-counter or the normal attack, not only is flanked, but bleeds. And it has a chance to apply the flanked and the bleed as a pre-counter, which is really nice to apply flanked for free. The Brute is one of the few agent weapons that actually has the spare on it, and it also has the nice little thing of Buff Blocker. If Brute is comboed with the Crooked Branch over here, because this is magic, it would heal you. This is one of the better ways of putting out the spare if you don't have a hero that does it, or you want your agent to do it. Plus, hey, Buff Blocker is, of course, pretty nice. Mark of the Brotherhood, my somewhat original friend for Molly. I don't actually use this with Molly, despite the fact that it can be killer. The Mark of the Brotherhood apply, applies a morale boost to the entire team when it is used if they are a mutant. All allied mutants gain rally and morale boost. So yes, Molly counts as a mutant. She would be able to taunt and then Tantrum in the same round, provided the agent goes before she does. When a friendly mutant is defeated, remaining mutants are healed. I use this with my Team Subtlety, which was X-Force Archangel and X-Force Psylocke. This allowed Psylocke to shield for free, and also give them a morale boost without actually applying a morale boost icon. Another item I wanted to point out, recently buffed, we have the Vigilante Toolkit. The Vigilante Toolkit, when it was originally released, gave you all of these green, unremovable buffs. The Agility, the Feral Stance, and the Selfless Defender. Then it was nerfed so that you had to apply them individually, but they had quick cooldown so it was tough to maintain all three. Right now, however, they last for three rounds and are not removable, so it actually has a rather solid buff. The good thing is you can kind of cheese the system depending on if you provide the buff already. If you already protect, you don't need to use the Selfless Defender. You can just buff yourself with Arachnid Agility and the Feral Stance. What is kind of neat about the kit is these two roll up and apply debuffs that the retractable claw can exploit. Plus, it can exploit it on the feral stance counter. However, it's probably best used if somebody else can apply the pressure points and you can just turn around and exploit them with the retractable claw. If you run this with a bruiser suit or some kind of protection, uh, then you're probably going to be countering a lot. So that was an item that uh, took a nerf at one point in time and then just recently came back and gave us a rather nice buff. So even though this one is not particularly old, this is called the Caltrop Launcher. Think of the Wombo combo that you could do with this. If you were to use the Scroll of Runamaroth, which says that debuffs are not removable, and then fired off the Caltrop Launcher, 
and was running Age of Ultron Quicksilver, you have a very interesting thing on your hand over here. The enemy team is not allowed to use ranged, and anytime somebody melee attacks, they're going to bleed and hemorrhage, and Quicksilver has a chance to interrupt it. So if your agent reduced melee damage, Quicksilver had a chance to interrupt it, or you ran the interrupt ISO and the Caltrop launcher, Basically, you really shut everything down over there. You have done a lot of work in preventing enemy attacks. Custom Sword of the Baron is an interesting item that is definitely worth farming, especially those who like bleeds, which work very well in the lower ranks of PvP. You can heal any time you hit a bleeder. It causes bleeding, but it also heals you if you hit a bleeder. Very nice with Fandral or any of the three stack bleeders. The Cosmic Flame. I wanted to point this item out in that it has a passive, unremovable heal over time. And it is a quick action that when used on anybody, it says that their next attack applies Soul Fire. This is really good if you apply this to a stealthy person or somebody who does AoE. Imagine dropping this on Fandral and then Fandral dropping a stealthy Flame Circus. You have applied all the debuffs he applies, including three stacks of bleeds and soul fire. Soul fire is similar to nano plague in that it removes buffs. However, it will not remove the mystic like nano plague does. But if no immunity prevention is out, this will apply soul fire, which will then immediately turn around and remove buffs. Unlike nano plague, however, you can simply reapply the buffs. The, I always call this one the Book of AoE Flank. This is called the Grimoire of the Legion. It is magic and it is a debuff, which means it is a quick action with the newest PvP Tactician Suit. All enemies are flanked, however, you may gain a chance to gain a stack of bleeding. A little risky if you are not bleed immune, but works out pretty well if you are running Hafe and not in the presence of Pesty. AoE flanked is absolutely phenomenal, and you can spam this every turn. It used to be um, I would end my turn on a Grimoire of the Legion back in the day, but then Hafe got very popular, he countered everything, so I took it out of rotation. Um, but in team immunity like Wonder Man, Sandman, Destroyer, this is a pretty nice item, especially if the agent is running something like heavy metal so that he cannot bleed. Speaking of heavy metal, let's take a look at the Soak. The Soak has been referenced in a lot of videos. It is called the Scroll of Aknazak. The Scroll of Aknazak is a four-part scroll. It is a buff all the way until the end when it is only a debuff. So with Snappy Service, this can become a quick action. This, in round one, it removes buffs and applies Indomitable Spirit. This is like Thunder's ISO, but this came first. This is a phenomenal must-have item. Sadly, it's from Covert Ops. For any of the Rising Up teams, your Wonder Mans, your Thundras, anything like that, if you wanted to make sure that, uh, well, Prism Stacks can't get removed, but... If you really had something you wanted to seal in, the soak is the absolute level best thing you could do. You only need to use it once, and you've done your job. This says that your buffs are not removable. However, this goes for the enemy team. The good thing is... ...is that you apply a buff removal first. So you wipe the slate clean on their side... And then seal buffs in. If they later apply buffs, please note that they will be sealed in. But, likely, well, yeah, see, this will even run over buff blocker. Because as you can see, it suppresses most effects that prevent or remove buffs. Prevent would be a buff blocker. So this turns off buff blocker. Second seal applies broken will to the enemy team, but then the whole playing field gains spirit weapons with his ethereal strike and ignore defense. The third seal, everybody on the enemy team has despair, but then everybody on the field gets heavy metal. 
Essentially, everybody becomes a worthy. You're immune to bleeding, burning, and chilled, and you have a very high crit resistance. And then, the fourth seal of Aknazak applies soul fire to the enemy team, which doesn't make sense because it will not remove buffs. However, it still applies soul fire. Everybody gets two turns, and you suicide. This turns the field into hell. Which is what some of us are predicting Damon will do when he becomes a worthy, similar how Nerk God puts us under the ocean. Maybe Damon will send us to hell. And it always reminds me of the Isle of Bones from Chrono Trigger. That little island that you would go to where I think like you meet Garajal or Dario's spirit buddy and, and you just walked on all the bones. It was very crunchy and there was like a lot of like flying undead dragons and everything. Every time I see hell, that's that's what that reminds me of is um, that little sequence over there in Chrono. So what are some of the other items that I wanted to point out? Well, I wanted to go ahead and point out this interesting thing called the Power Cell, which goes in with the Smart Set. Sadly, this is not worth it anymore. You can farm the 500 watt power supply in early chapter 2 and you can get the 750 from the gadget daily. This basically says that any one of your smart weapons that are equipped have a chance to follow up when you attack. So basically where it used to be good is when the revolt was a free action and you can spam it until the ammo ran out. Any of your other smart weapons, like the Chaos Shot, like the Knife, like the Power Gauntlet, had a chance to join in. So you could possibly fire off five Revolt Shots and attack five times with the Power Gauntlet for free. Unfortunately, the Revolt is now only a quick action and basically it ruins the entire theme of the gun. It may as well be like, what, the Custom Thursday Special, whatever it is that becomes a quick action. It's worthless. But this leads me over to the Power Cell. Power Cell was used with the Vindication set. And the one that I want to point out first was one of my first favorite PvP weapons and a very unique weapon. Nothing in the game does this. It's called the Stalker. The Stalker says that you hit somebody and provided they can be debuffed, they get Electronic Tracking Round. Attacks cannot be stealthy like Quicksilver Electra. And anytime they attack, they are countered with surveillance. If surveillance is out on your team, everybody counterattacks the person who has electronic tracking ground. Now, fumbling means only the victim counterattacks. Electronic tracking and surveillance means everybody counterattacks. So. Let's say at the end of round one, you hit Quicksilver with the Power Cell and then the Stalker. At the beginning of round two, when he attacks once, all three of your people counterattack. If he attacks his second time, again, all three of your people will counterattack. High damage potential. I used to use this with anybody whose level 1s meant something really, really good, like Magic and her Soul Chargers, or Sabretooth and Blood Frenzy. Uh, one of the first really, like, ingenious or, like, mind-using things uh, that I did back in the day, its brother is the Void Generator. I used to use this on defense until I saw an agent use it on defense, and they were absolutely miserable with their intelligence. This consumes a charge from the power cell, and if you use the high capacity charge, your entire team removes debuffs, gets a shield, and the victim of the gun gets a remove buffs. Anytime you get hit with a void shield being up, that person loses a buff. And as long as the void shield holds, you cannot have harmful debuffs placed on you, of course, unless there's a Pesty. So that means if Pesty was dead and your Enchantress was hitting you, that magic missile does so little damage, you would laugh as she plugged away at your team if she tried to cower you and seduce you. All of it would just simply wash over you because of a void shield. However, Pasty would have to be removed from the battlefield 
at that point in time. One of the weapons you see occasionally in PvP, but has mostly long been forgotten, but was sometimes used with molly groups to give an extra turn, is the Shepherd's Staff. When you use this, everybody on your team, of course, has Crown of Glory. You take reduced damage from dots, like the signpost. Everybody gets a heal, and everybody gets lead the charge where they get an extra turn but you are stunned for the next turn. Really good if you were trying to get Molly accelerated or for Null to uh, get meteor stacks going and everything like that. Of course, this is somewhat rough in that it stuns the agent, but this is a, uh, it has some pretty nice passives over there. The Wellrod Pistol, this is a farmable item that is stealthy and applies combo setup. So if you run melee heavy teams in this era where stealth is really good, like to get around Kurth and protectors and everything, um, this will apply combo setup to something that you want to hit. Really good if you want to punch them in the next round or with a heavy melee hitter, you can ensure that your target gets the combo setup. Jumping to the golden items, an item that I wanted to point out, of course we know that the Golden 49er is the newest chapter mastery weapon. It certainly hits like a truck, especially if the grit has been stacking, plus it has fatal blow. When you add fatal blow to something that is already in nuke, you're ensuring that you're going to kill somebody. But the golden fan, I brought this out recently with my little tanky agent when I was doing some PvE. What the Golden Fan does is it says that the victim is impaired and you gain a removable buff called Flashing Fan. You will counterattack at a 50% chance to um, counterattack with another fan hit. When you uh, have this buff up, you take reduced damage from melee attacks. Certainly very good in the melee heavy meta. However, you do have to use the golden fan once to get at least that debuff rolling. But if you were running something else like um, that passive that group gives you where if you're above 80% you take reduced damage. Um, it's also the one Falcon gives you. It's, it's not combat expertise. Survival training. Survival training against these really massive... Uh, heavy follow-up teams and everything might allow you to live long enough to use the flashing fan and then further cut down on the damage. There, of course, is the golden heavy ion beam and the golden copus, which was really popular with enchantress teams or uh, attrition teams. So I'm just going to pop over to my Evernote really quick over here because I wanted to I wrote down some notes of some of the items that I wanted to uh, show you guys over here and I wanted to make sure that I was getting them all in and uh, hopefully we'll close out the video because it is rolling long but of course it is a lot of stuff to go through over here Ah, yes, the Hexen Jaeger and the Flaming Post. Oh my god, how did I forget? Yeah, so I've forgotten about a lot over here. So, let's take a look at the Flaming Post. The Flaming Post is the cousin of the Traumatic Post, which is available in the sale. This is a Jeet, which is a Psy, kind of like Electra uses, but with only one additional weapon catching prong. It was on sale at one point in time. Flame War, chance to counter single target attacks and apply Pyrophoric and Flanked. Only by the counter attack can you apply the Pyrophoric and the Flanked. Otherwise, you simply apply Burning. But it is a psychic weapon. So this is, like the Viber Crescent, a nice way of spreading around Flanked. The Hexen Jaeger was another item that was on sale at one point in time. You gain the Black Knight's Pentecostal Oath, Magic Warding. You will cause burning on somebody. You will make them cower. One of the few agent things that causes cower other than the Bruiser Suit. And you apply a very unique debuff called Hot Seat. 
Hot Seed says that if this person casts magic, soul fire will be applied to them and they take a pop of damage, similar to the Crooked Branch and similar to the Rectifier with energy. The Adhesive X Launcher, also known as the Bubblegum Launcher or the Cotton Candy Launcher, this is a two round tech item that applies Adhesive X to the enemy team, similar to Taffy or when Molly uses Taffy from Leftover Candy. It makes it so people cannot protect and cannot counter at 100%, but it also applies a mobilize, which means they have a chance to not do any melee whatsoever. Very, very good with these quick groups and a little bit of curve, a little bit of null. Pesties level 1, Pesties level 9, uh, they all get shut down by that. One of the few agent boon busting items is the Blade of the Corruptor, similar to what the demons use. Very good if you have Share the Love on uh, Deadpool, because then you can apply buffs to an enemy, guaranteed, and then turn around and exploit them. What would be interesting if you combo this with the Soak, the buffs would not be removable other than them fading off in time. So there's an interesting combo. Apply the soak, Deadpool hits somebody, gives them buffs, they're not removable, and then you just turn around and keep exploiting them on uh, the Blade of the Corruptor. One of the few items in the game that create that damned if you do, damned if you don't debuff is Doom. Doom says if you remove it, you get hit. If it expires, you get hit. The only thing you can do is rest out of it, but similar to Doom is genetically altered from the Pound of Cure, which came from the Horseman Spec Ops. This is an AoE item that poisons the entire team and makes it so you yourself are immune to poison. Very good if you are carrying a weapon that puts poison on you like the Signpost. Ooh, nice combo there, huh? So you poison the enemy team with a chance to weaken them, dizzy them, or slow them. That's pressure points. But the big thing is genetically altered. You take damage every turn. Attack defense accuracy or evasion may be reduced. Takes heavy damage if genetic alteration is removed before expiring. Similar to Doom. Where this comes in really handy is if you are running anti-venom. And you apply Doom or genetically altered on this he can remove it with his purge and you will proc doom and you will proc this item right here right then and there at the time of purge which is sort of how you deal with a few of the people in the anti-venom agent venom heroic so if you have this item and you have anti-venom or you have doom and anti-venom that is uh, a little bit of a wombo combo of course, we now do have Demise, which immediately procs Doom if it's up. But at the time that Pound of Cure was up, um, we did not have anything that could proc Doom immediately. So I believe that is everything that was kind of interesting that I wanted to show you guys. Um, the Fantastic Shielding, there apparently were some people at the very higher levels of PvP who were exploiting it and then turned around and used it with another item called the Arc Reactor Charge, which then cycled back and refilled your stamina quite heavily. One of the things that I thought might refill the stamina was this Horn of Wisdom. However, um, this is just a magic item. It's not a quick item, and it cannot be a quick item under anything However, there is a weapon that can potentially turn the Horn of Wisdom into a quick item. So I thought this might be a little bit of a dirty trick uh, with that shield. But people went out and invented their own with the, uh, the arc reactor charge over there. There's the Manvataras that came from the Kang lock boxes, which were the original way of I thought of applying stagger to everybody but it was being protected even though it was a temporal item and that's that yeah that's it's pretty much it for some interesting things I wanted to show you the ruby quartz rifle is sort of like cyclops however 
you apply to yourself a chance to counter single target and area attacks with firing this gun. Very, very good if you apply the rectifier to yourself because every time you counter, you would wind up healing. So yeah, that's it's pretty much what I want to show you guys. There's the interesting little freezer. There's the experiment which is available in the store. So on and so forth. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at some weapons and gear from the past over here that might spark some things. Uh, before I go, here's a very unique item called the Combat Communicator. Everybody on your team gets similar to the Neurotrope. They have combat awareness where they will counter attacks, but this gives you a chance to go first in combat. And yes, this will beat Loki and Quicksilver. When I used to run this item for um, my X-Force team, I definitely beat out Quicksilver many, many times to the punch and was able to go before he was. Uh, one of the items that was used in the Eternal Agent was this item over here, the Protector of Adeline. The Protector of Adeline says beneficial status effects will not be removed by enemy attacks or harmful status effects. So this will seal in your own buffs. And what the Eternal Agent would do is use the Protector of Adeline every time it was up to seal in being phased so that you could not scroll it off and you could not black as void it off. From the Vindication set was the Obliterator. I used to use this with Havoc and Iron Patriot. It consumes a, um, a high capacity charge to apply Shield Breaker to the enemy team. It exploits flyers. There's Obliterated which reduces attack and causes burning. And it has a chance for a follow-up when you apply the high capacity charge. So good for your Rocket Raccoons and your Union Jacks. There's the Neural Purge, which is phenomenal. The Chitter Chatter Box, very unique, and that's farmable. Awesome item. I suggest everybody try to get that. I've done videos on the Devourer. There's the Tankard. Interesting sale item, the Batstone Predator. It applies styptic to you so that you cannot bleed. For more than one round if somebody on your team dies this becomes catastrophic and follows up on its attacks including aoe and you also take reduced damage if the person attacking you is bleeding pulse blade it protects except it will not protect against the class that is your counter so a bruiser would not protect against a blaster interesting weapon so it kind of helps ensure that maybe somebody doesn't gain class benefits off of you so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you saw anything in there for gear or weapons that you like drop a line and i'll try to maybe tell you where it came from or what you can combo it with take care everybody